Good evening. Um, I hope you're not too tired. The day was long and full. Uh, I first want to apologize. Uh, English is not my mother tongue, and uh, it's not always easy to find the right words. So I'll use my notes, at least for the beginning. Um, so the topic is about the preparations, but there's not only the preparations in biodynamics. It will be a focus. Um, first of all, we need to realize or to remember that agriculture is the foundation of many aspects of daily life. In the food, health, healthcare products, but also in clothing, landscape, water quality, the earth's capacity to sustain life, all that is, connects us every day to agriculture. Biodynamic agriculture was put forward by Rudolf Steiner in response to problems caused by decades of intensification of farming practice far removed from nature and life. But also in response to problems due to weakening vitality and fertility of the earth. Rudolf Steiner's view of agriculture is vast and all-encompassing. The farmer is seen in a greater context, where many interactions are formed between the life of the soil and the life of the plants, the animals, and the people on the farm. He also points out the relationships between the life on the farm and the wildlife in the surrounding environment. The insects, animals, birds, hedges, trees, forests, wetlands, also takes into consideration the wider influences of the planet Earth and other planets, the stars and the spiritual world. Taking into account these diverse and complex considerations, his approach encourages us to look at agriculture in a completely different way. The ideal of a diversified farm and, the f and of the farm as an individualized organism form the firm and solid foundation for well-balanced agriculture, resulting in healthy soils, plants, animals, and people. This balance is also reflected economically on the farm by reducing the need to bring in elements from outside sources. This is also beneficial on a lar large scale, economically and ecologically, as farmers become less dependent on industry, transport services, and outside sourcing in general. In addition to this broad understanding of agriculture and the living, Rudolf Steiner urges the farmer to take an active role in the future of the planet by introducing a totally new dimension, the production and use of the biodynamic preparations. These preparations support the development of soil fertility and the health of plants grown on these on this soils. They open far-reaching perspectives for a new quality of agricultural production and the support of man in his evolution. Agriculture that is coherent and create health does not only act on the soil, plants, animal, animals, and human food production, it also becomes a factor of health for the whole society. In his lecture, Rudolf Steiner lays the foundation for the practical renewal of agriculture. It's the first course on general ecology. It gives an outlook on the co-evolution of the earth and the human being in a widened context reaching to the cosmos. It is a practical agricultural manual that provides basic methodology for farm work, manuring, composting, how to make the preparations, pest control, animal feed, and a few more things. It also provides the groundwork for inner development that promotes the development of new capacities to heal the earth and food. By creating health in the soil, by bringing structure, porosity, fertility, 
as well as the health of plants, animals, and food production, his, works can, his work can also be considered as a course in salutogenesis. I'll use the word again later. Um, okay. That was just to put the preparations in their context. It's a part of it, but it's the newest part. Uh, and now we'll focus on the preparations. The 500 horn manual, the compost preparations, six, compost pre six preparations for the compost, the prepared 500, that is something made out of 500 and compost preparation, and the 501 horn silica. First, a little look on the preparations, and then a deeper look in the, the effects, the results we can have with the preparations. So the 500, um, I guess you all know what it is. Uh, but it's important to, uh, well, every step in the making of the preparations is, is important. We choose good manure, good quality manure. We start working uh, with the farmers. I'm not, I'm not a farmer myself. Uh, I have uh, good uh, neighbors at the Meta Farm. And in June, we start thinking how we can, where we're going to harvest the manure, how we're going to feed the cows. Uh, we bury the horns uh, in a way that they don't touch one each other. It's an individual process in each horn. So this is as many, many things in your lives. It needs care and attention. Uh, we leave them in the soil during the winter, always at the same place, the best place, the most fertile place that we have. Uh, and we can also improve the quality of the soil where we, where we want to bury the, the preparations. Um, when we take them out, we clean them carefully. We want only the 500, only the preparation, no, no soil with it. And that's what it looks like when it comes out of the horns. And that's what it looks like a few weeks or maybe a few months later. The 500, as you know, uh, Steiner describes it uh, saying it pushes from below. It helps the substance formation. Uh, it's, it helps the growth process. It makes a link to the earth. We will see all that on the next pictures. Six preparations for the compost. So, yarrow, chamomile, the nettle, harvesting oak bark, dandelion, right, right stage for picking, and the valerian. These preparations have two different aims from my uh, understanding. First, when we put them in the compost, they will orientate the fermentation process. So that's why we need to put them right when we make the heap, because it will start, uh, the fermentation will start uh, very, very fast. And um, we have lower temperatures. We keep better nutrients, more nutrients. We lose less nutrients than in, in uh, usual composting. And then when we bring the compost on the soil, these preparations will play an active role in mobilizing, mobilizing the elements. Uh, we know the connection of each plant, of each preparation with different elements. That's a quick look at the compost preparations. Again, for each of them, the process of making them is very precise. As you can see it here, under, I should use this, The yarrow is harvested, and then we take the flowers away. We don't want any stem. We don't have the same quality in the stem and in the flower. We want the flower. This, same. No stem. It takes a long time to pick. But uh, that's how we make it. That's how we want it. For the nettle, we don't take stem either. Until last year, we used to take a bit of stem, and now we decided to try without stem. 
There is what we know, and there's a lot of questions left, and we always discover new questions. Uh, that's why I usually say, uh, okay, we've reached a certain point, but it's never finished, and all that, I'm sure of what I do with the preparations, because I'm sure I see the results, and I'll show you the results. But I'm sure I will change, uh, and we can always go further. And that's something interesting with the biodynamic method. Okay, the Prepared 500. It was first developed in Australia by Alex Podolinski. Uh, you probably all know the uh, Maria Thun barrel compost, CPP. That was the answer to the question, how can we bring the compost preparations where we don't bring compost or, we, or where we don't make compost. Uh, Prepared 500 was uh, the same answer in another, in another context. Uh, and I tell you uh, a few words about it because what you will see, the results we have on soil development uh, is always by using this preparation and not the normal 500. The point is, Steiner says in the course we need to use the compost preparations every year. Let's not exactly say it like that, but it, that's what it means. We bring the 500 every year. Most of the crops, well, not most of the crops, a lot of crops don't need compost every year. A lot of farms don't have enough compost to bring compost everywhere every year. How do we answer this problem? Uh, this, is, this is a good answer. It's widely used in Europe. Uh, a lot of people use that in France, in Italy, uh, in Spain, more and more in Germany, uh, Croatia, some other countries. A few people here as well, a few people in here. Okay, the 501 preparation, Horn Silica. We go high in the mountains in the French Alps, and here what you can see is the Mont Blanc. Uh, so we're facing the Mont Blanc when we harvest the crystals here. Uh, it's always a nice moment. And people who come with us find it very inspiring. They say, when we wake up early to, spray the five, to stir the 501, it's so much easier when you know where it, where it come from, comes from. <laughs> then we grind it, uh, we put it in the horns, and then we, it, we store it properly. Important to grind it as fine as flour. I'll tell a few words about it later. Well, now, yeah. For all these preparations, we try to reach what I call the colloidal state. Colloids are something very special in life, and not only in life, but they, uh, they carry the life. If we look at, at all the realms of the, of the living, we have uh, colloids in the soil, and it's humus is a colloid, the clay is a colloid. If you don't have humus and you don't have clay, there's no farming. Uh, in the plants, the sap is a colloid. In the animals, the blood is a colloid. Same for us. Everything that is carrying the life is under the form of a colloid. We bring minute quantities of preparations, and with that we transform many things in the soil, in the plants, in the quality of the products. So that's how we also transform the animals and the humans. We need to find the, the, proper, uh, the proper state for our preparation to be efficient. Can we change this light, please? Thank you. Um, and the colloidal state seems to be the right one. Uh, the 501 can be a colloid. It has to be fine enough. And it's colloid, it's between the solid and the liquid. You don't really know. You, you have the qualities of the two uh, different states. Um, colloids, Friedrich Benesch, uh, it's translated into English. Uh, Friedrich Benesch describes the colloids as being the state that allows uh, the step from the physical substance to the process and to the life process. Uh, it says we take a physical substance we transform it into a colloid, and then it, it's able to have new, new, uh, new activity to, to, 
become uh, to start processes. Processes. So, a few important points for the use of the preparations. Uh, but very quickly, this is the, the topic of the workshop, but uh, I will at least name the different uh, things, because if you have wonderful preparations, and if you don't use them well, don't expect to have too many results. Uh, everything is important. Uh, storage of the preparation is important. We need to have boxes with dried pit moss, and they need to be in a place where there's no electricity, where you don't go with your mobile phone, where there's no Wi-Fi, and all these kind of pollutions, but also no bad smells, no, no diesel, don't, don't put the chainsaw uh, in the same room, uh, but not uh, essential oils, it's all, all what can make a pollution, what you feel would disturb. It's, then we should ask, uh, we should wonder if it's a problem or not. The 501 needs to be stored in the sunlight. The water, the water quality is a very important factor. From my point of view, the best water is the rainwater, but the rainwater is polluted. We need to take the four first millimeters away when it rains. Each time it rains, the four first millimeters bring down the pollution that is hanging in the sky, uh, and they clean the roof. So we get rid of that, and then we can have clean water. If you live on, a, um, uh, on an acid place, if it's uh, silica, if the soil is silica, you can, you can use well water, it works. The chalky water is a problem. It blocks the preparations. If there's iron in the water, it's a problem. If there's any product in the water, the tap water is quite never usable. If you don't have anything else, use, use what, we, what you have. But it's always important to know how we can improve. To store the water, uh, concrete uh, tanks on the ground are the best. Concrete or stone if you're lucky to have that. Uh, but there's many other possibilities. All this you find a document on our website, which we translated last week, so you can uh, have uh, access to that. Um, the document, not the website. <laughs> uh, the stirring. Stirring by hand, for me, is okay up to 110, 120 liters. More than that, the machine makes a better work. It's uh, easy to make a bad stirring by hand, and it's easy to make bad stirring machines. Uh, for me, the stirring machines, if we use a machine, Always think of one thing. The preparation are deeply connected to life and to the living. And the life is always connected to the rhythm. If we make a machine, we need to find something that... Okay, let me just interrupt you a minute. Yes. We've got low light, so you can see the pictures of his soil, which is coming up. Now the spotlight is horrible on Vincent. That's why I'm here. <laughs> but we can't see you. The camera oh, can't sorry. see you. <laughs> so if you could just pull up the container for spotlight, we've got the perfect experience. Not better? <laughs> okay. Do we actually need to see the spotlight? I, I agree with you. Okay, let's carry on. I'll try to stay in between. Uh, so we need to find stirring systems that are uh, rhythmic and not clock, uh, that don't change with the clock. Spraying, spraying. If you stir 500, you've got two hours maximum to spray. If you stir 501, you've got three hours maximum. After that, the effect is getting weaker and weaker. Uh, each time we can avoid plastic. It helps. Each time we use plastic, we lower, lower the effect of the preparations. And then when to spray, times and cosmic rhythms, the 501 is normally in the morning. You can make special use of 501 in the evening, but it's always something special. Uh, the 500 is, I've never seen the 500 work when uh, used in the morning. 
from it's always in the evening. And then cosmic rhythms, uh, it can be a huge problem to find one's way in the calendar. There's some things that are more important and I would start with avoiding the node days. And then we can play a bit more and we can get good help with some uh, rhythms, but uh, there's no need to uh, follow everything that's in the calendar, except if you want to get mad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, we make our own biodynamic calendar, and uh, you can uh, download it from our website. Uh, it's free. Okay, now, do I forget anything? I need to check. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, now we, we come to the, to the results. Uh, and first of all, little thing, we need to remember how it goes to create a soil. The plants create fertile soil through their root activity. What you can see here, is the very beginning of our situation. Uh, lichens and then moss, and it's making the beginning of the work. And what you see here is uh, much, much later, but here we see roots that still improve the soil, that help building a structure in the soil, that uh, also, as Peter said the first evening, uh, it creates organic matter in the soil. And our aim, and this is what the 500 knows how to do so well, is to transform organic matter into humus. Um, here, you have little, little plants of Veronica. And you see how long the roots are? This is the effect of the prepared 500. And you see the first part of the soil from the top to here is a very fertile one. And here it's different. So this is the next step. This will become like that. So that's why it's important to work on the root systems of the plants. So I'll show you a few pictures now of how to develop the soil with the use of home manure. As I told you, mainly prepared 500. And uh, we can see that as the creation of new earth. What you will see is the root hair development. A lot of little white feed the roots uh, in the plants. An increase in microbial, microbial activity, a darkening of the soil, increased humification, and we always, when we see that, we always have beautiful soil aromas. Structure, structure, porosity, and water management of soil is improved. The soil is more resistant to drought condition, but it's also is able to manage big amounts of water. And we also observe changes in the flora uh, anywhere where we use the preparations. Burgundy. Uh, a lot of the pictures I'm going to show you are taken in uh, vineyards. Vineyards are a great field for experimentation because it's a monoculture, because it stays, the crop stays for years, and because uh, the people are usually very, very careful and uh, they like to compare and see what works best. So we usually, uh, okay, on this place, for example, uh, you will see pictures of two years of biodynamics compared with organic. And the, the owner was not sure. He wanted to make sure the results would be uh, good results. So the same trial was repeated four times on eight plots, four times organic, four times biodynamic. If we don't have the same results, uh, four times, then I don't show you the pictures. <laughs> and then all the rest, except the preparations, is made the same. So, we, we are here, on this uh, block here. And as you see, it's uh, still, there's no grass, not much grass anyway. Sorry. Here, the biodynamic part, 
here, organic part. And you see, just see that there's no much, there's no more grass here than here. This is now, we take a fork and we just dig in the soil and we look at the organic part. And now we look at the biodynamic part and we put them side to side. Here, the organic, here, the biodynamic. Do you see any difference? Many more roots here, but the soil is also darker here. And if you imagine you go with your hand, just like that, in both sides, it goes very differently under the finger, yeah? Here, you have big uh, lumps, and here it's much more crumbling. Do you see that? Okay, two years. This is on the same context. This is silt soils, and it's five years of biodynamics on this side. And, uh, well, it's quite obvious. Soil structure, soil color. Now we're in Champagne different kinds of soils. And now we make the comparison with uh, conventional, which is not interesting from my point of view because we know it's easy to make better than conventional farming. I'm interested in making better than organic. Uh, <laughs> but sometimes that's the situation we have. So, beginning. This is before the first spray of preparations. And you see, here's the top soil. It's been lifted like that and it's completely dead. Here, at a stage a few years ago, they brought some organic matter and it's still here. So there's no life in this soil. Nothing is uh, putting things in movement. All the plants that we see on the, on the field uh, are, sorry, it's here, uh, typical plants from compacted soil. And you see what it means, compacted soil. Okay, this is the place at the beginning uh, and there's a, an infection, Cournoy, we're the 3rd of May, 2007. And they will tear the, the place in two and spray only on one half. And this is the 6th of June, 3rd of May, 6th of June. And the limit is here. And on that part, they spread two times the Prupet 500 and one time the 501. And they spread it once in Perry J, which is very, very interesting if you need to help plants who are really, really too weak. And that's beautiful. If your wine looks like that in May, in June, you can be wor worried. So, interesting results. Now, we jump two years. And we come back in the same place. And the limit is here. And this, all the stems here, it's amarante. You know amarante? I don't know how to pronounce it. Well, <laughs> uh, amaranth, maybe, something like that. Anyway, it loves compacted soils. And on this side, it's quite finished. Behind the man, biodynamic, in front of him, conventional. And he got rid, without doing anything else than spraying the preparations, he got rid of this plant. The soil now, Conventional hair, biodynamic hair. The picture is not good, but you see the color, and you see that here, it's loose. The structure is changed. Also in Champagne, a bit further, three years of biodynamics here. And you see that the picture with the Veronica I've shown you before? It was the same than here, with the limit here. Good soil, and then not much life. And see the change. There is cultivation. It's not, it's, it takes a bit more, more time when the soil is not uh, moved. In Bordeaux now, um, I'm French and uh, I take you in a little trip around the wine regions in France. So now we're in, we are in Bordeaux, saint Estephe, and it's only one year of biodynamic practice. Two applications of Prepot 500 in spring, one in autumn, and then there's the 501, 
but it's not what we see on the pictures. And in one year, that's the results we have. We're in March. We're in March, and March, uh, probably the same here, it's still, in, it's still winter. It's, the winter is quite finished. So here the grass did not start, and here the grass is already uh, alive. And you see how high the grass is, and you see how deep the roots go. That's interesting. You see the difference in the color, you see the difference in the structure. One year. In Margot, still in Bordeaux, and the problem is different. Here, um, there's too much organic matter. They bring huge amounts of old compost. And th this is a bit difficult for the soil to manage. And the plants in spring need to have something they can eat fast, uh, uh, like, how do you call that, flash manuring, or something like that. Uh, otherwise, they don't grow. They don't start in, in spring. But the soil is full, full, full of organic matter. This is the organic part. And one year of biodynamic practice, properly made, changes. And it's not often, but this time we're happy to have a soil that is uh, getting uh, what is it, darker and uh, lighter. I don't even know the word, because I'm used to, to say, look, it's getting darker, it's nice. <laughs> and this here, this little plant, uh, the name in French is Mouron, and it's taking the, the excess of nitrogen out. Interesting. So, it means we bring life in the soil. It's not only bringing more uh, humus, it's just bringing the life process. The preparations are things that regulate the processes of uh, life. And that's a, an interesting example. A um, few more pictures. Southern Ardèche, Rhone Valley. And five years of biodynamic practice on a loose soil. So again, a different kind of soil. This is the organic one, and this is the biodynamic one. So we always have the same criteria. Now we're in Switzerland, and we see that better on the next one. Biodynamic hair, organic hair. Interesting. Now we go to Italy, uh, because they also make wine. So I tried to speak a bit about wine, because Monty did not speak that much about wine. <laughs> Uh, this salad is not even three weeks old, uh, but it had three times the throughput 500. And you see how the root system, okay, this one is an organic one, this one is a biodynamic one. This root system is, uh, you see all the soil that is uh, sticking to the roots. This is the activity, this is the exchange between the plant and the life in the soil. We spoke a lot about bacteria, but here, the bacteria get good food. That's why they stay around the roots. And what they do in exchange is that they produce colloids that make the soil structure, that make the, the soil hold together and have a good structure. So this is a direct effect of the, the 500. Now, this is a conventional wine and this is the neighbor. This is the same uh, field or block and it was shared, the, it was given to two, two children, and one went conventional, the other one went biodynamic. And you see how the roots dive uh, to the earth. And here, it's quite different. The soil on this place, conventional, biodynamic. Now, this is a bit different. This is on the wine plantation. And uh, Richard was there in June. Uh, actually, the same day the, picture, the pictures were taken, uh, 15th of June. One spray of Pripyat 500, 15th of April. And I don't know if you see it, but here, the guy only spread this part, eight rows. And you see that there's a difference in the color? This happened in two months. And if we take soil, soil samples, you see that here the biodynamic part is already changed in the structure and in the color. Two months. And this picture, I took it the 15th of October, uh, two weeks ago. Uh, and this is three years of biodynamics. This is in the Rhone Valley again. Three years of biodynamics. 
and the naval convention, uh, organic, sorry. Okay, this is just to give you an idea of uh, what we can expect from a good use of the biodynamic preparations. This is not only the 500. This is the 500 and the compost preparations. Uh, when we speak about uh, sustainability, a soil that goes from here, there's, there's about five meters between the two samples. So I took the first sample here, and I walked about five meters to take the other one. On this place, in a few years, there's no need for compost anymore. Or we can reach the point that Steiner describes uh, at the end of the fifth lecture, I think, when he says, it's in the, in the discussion afterwards, and he says, uh, we will need compost only every five to six years, uh, and in small quantities. Okay, if we have a situation like that, and if we improve a bit more, then we will reach this point. That's interesting. Now, a few things about uh, 501, silica. Um, we use horn silica to balance the plants, to make them more receptive to the cosmic environment, to stimulate immunity, and to favor the qualitative and maturation processes. Silica, I did not describe that earlier, but if we need to put a few words on it, uh, when Steiner says the 500 pushes from below, he says it's, uh, the words, it pulls from upwards, it brings a light effect, it gives structure. You always, what you will see, you see the, you see the potato here. This is not a usual potato, it's upright, it's shiny. Uh, it's the effect of the 501. The 501 only comes when we've already uh, said something to the soil with the 500. Typical plant behavior in plants that have received both horn manure and horn silica sprays. We see an individualized architecture. You will see how the leaves get an individual position. Uh, the plant is uh, structured, more upright, the colors are brighter, and what we see during, along the season is uh, that it stimulates immunity and that it improves the organoleptic qualities. Okay, this is a typical upright uh, plant standing after the 501, and uh, you have the feeling it's light, it's hanging, it's not, it's not drooping. Uh, yeah. There's no biodynamic preparations. And here it's just a side on the same place, and you have the preparations. You see what it means, upright positioning of the leaves, individual positioning of the leaves. You can see through the row here, and a bit less here, and it's not shiny here. This is what I call a healthy plant. Same kind of situation in Alsace this time. We've not been to Alsace yet. Uh, and in Alsace, it's, uh, uh, yeah, the soils are fert fertile. So you have a lot of leaves, big leaves, and it's a heavy green. And now, this is organic, and this part has, got, has received the preparations. The leaves, the, yeah, the leaves uh, stand differently. This is uh, an excess, <laughs> it's not an excess, but the leaves are standing so uh, high. It's amazing, I've never seen that before. This man spread 10 times the 501 this year. It's in Jura, and Jura has a lot of rain, and when you have a lack of sun, you can bring the sun qualities, you can make a balance by bringing more 501. Different crops now. You know how the mice leaves are heavy and big, and here it's able to carry itself. Uh, it's also a little thing for the uh, people working on seeds. This mice here is a home selected mice uh, for different qualities and for the fact that it's, it makes seeds to the end, which is uh, less and less now in the, in the mice that, uh, that are used. Again, good positioning of the leaves. Again, you have something. The light can go 
and the air can go. Uh, just remember that the fungi love when it's shade and humidity. Uh, we don't give them the right conditions to settle. Now, on strawberries, it's, uh, <laughs> there's a hoover on top, okay, and it pulls the, the leaves. Uh, very interesting to spray before the harvest. The people will come back in the evening and say, hey, what happened? It was so easy to harvest today. Uh, this, this happened in, on a big farm in Germany. This is at my neighbor's place, and tree 501 have been sprayed, and you see again the positioning of the leaves. This is all healthy plants. I don't know if you see that, but if you're farmers, you probably have this feeling uh, for that. Yeah, again, you have something, uh, it's alive. There's some energy in the plants. Same. Tomatoes in Germany, uh, no copper. It's in July. There's not a spot of any uh, disease or any insect. And the tomato is also a plant that is heavy and that eats a lot and, and uh, groups. And uh, here, what we can see is that the tomatoes are light, upright. That's not usual. 501 is used in, uh, with an average of once every second week. Same place, Maria Binert in Germany. And uh, you have the French beans, and it's the same. You see the leaves have a beautiful position. Same place again, carrots. Uh, for the people who work on seeds, that's an interesting little thing. First, you can see that the general uh, behavior of the plant is interesting. But on the right side here, there's more uh, leaves and more light in the leaves. And it's the same, same plant. Uh, it's a Rodelica carrot. But here, the seeds, here on, on the left side, the seeds come from uh, Bingenheimer Zadgut, which is only a few hundred kilometers from the place. And here, the seeds have been made twice on the farm. Adaptation. And we can see the difference. This was in 2009. I was there again in July this year. And I've seen the same experiment again, but with different places where it was made. And again, the, the, the carrots, uh, the seeds made on the farm are the most beautiful and the most healthy. It's not mine. I'm, uh, it's very interesting. These people are, uh, well, she's called Maria Binert. It's near Leipzig in Germany. And... Uh, We've been there for a trip with a bus of, mark, of French market gardeners because I said, if you want to improve in biodynamics, we're going to visit th this place. Uh, if you read French, you'll find in a few weeks on my website uh, the pictures and the texts of what we've seen there. And there's a lot of things about how they weed the carrots. <laughs> OK, back to wine again. Here, an experiment. It's uh, the 10th of October this year, and on this side it's organic, on this, this side it's biodynamic. You see the difference? You know what it means if the leaves carry on their work a few weeks longer? It means that there's much more nutrients put in the roots for the, next, for the beginning of next year. This is a huge difference. When we speak about building health in the plants, this is something, uh, it tells something. Three times 501. And here, back to normal plants, seed onions, uh, again in Germany. And that's also a good image of a healthy crop. And Maria Binert again. Uh, how do you call that? Kürbis? Uh, pumpkins. Pumpkins. So we've finished these images with pumpkins. And uh, it's also pulled uh, to the sky. And uh, isn't that beautiful? So I call that one the cosmos call. Uh, <laughs> it's the answer from the plant to the 501. Um, 
Okay. So. I'm coming back to the agriculture course. As I told you, we can see it in different, on different levels. There's a practical agricultural manual. There's the groundwork for an inner development. And there's also the aspect, we can see it as a course on salutogenesis. I'm gonna speak a bit more about that now. Uh, we're gonna try to see how the preparations can be considered as factors contributing to salutogenesis. So, first of all, salutogenesis, what is it? Uh, we'll make a little uh, step in the medical world. Since yesterday we spoke a lot about health in the soil, in humans, this morning in the stomach, stomach uh, in the houses as well, uh, well as in agriculture, the health of the planet was mentioned. And we'll try to make a little connection between health uh, in the medical world uh, and in the agricultural world. Medicine was built for the last two to three hundred years on uh, what, something that we can call pathogenesis. It means identify the, the disease and fight the disease. And a great uh, contributor to this was Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur was uh, born in Arbois, in, in France, in the Jura. And his, his uh, work, his big work was to find why does the wine turn to vinegar? And he found out that it was, it was germs. So the answer is easy, kill the germs. Uh, and pasteurization is the right temperature to get rid of the germs. That's it. At the same time, there was another man in France, Claude Bernard, not far from him, but 200 kilometers, and they had a few good fights. Uh, and Claude Bernard was a physiologist. Louis Pasteur was a microbiologist. Claude Bernard did not agree at all. From his point of view, the germ is nothing, but the constitution is, uh, well, the solution is in the constitution. Everything is, the, is in the constitution. And this image, from Claude Bernard is very interesting. This is what we try to build with the preparations in agriculture. We try to build a healthy soil, healthy plants, to have healthy animals and healthy food. Uh, a step further with Aaron Antonovsky. He worked, uh, at the beginning worked in, in uh, the USA and um, he's considered as the father of salutogenesis. The idea is that health, well, his, his uh, work was about why in a population, when most of the people get ill, a few of them don't. And he studied the healthy people to try to find out why they stayed healthy. Um, he built a theory and just a few words on it. His idea is that health is not a, a balance. It's not a state that you reach and you stay healthy, but it's something dynamic, and uh, we need to mobilize resources, he calls that resources of resilience. And there's a few things that make these resources that you can have and mobilize. It's a potential to adapt to the situation. Uh, okay, that was Antonovsky, and then I'll uh, use a few ideas from Michaela Glöckler, which is, uh, the leader of the uh, medical section in Dornach, in Göttingen. And she identified three levels for building health in individuals. And I'll just make a parallel between what she says about human health and how we could see that in agriculture. Uh, yeah, this tree, I'll describe these three levels and we'll see that biodynamic preparation, not only <coughs> biodynamic preparations, but they take a good part in uh, uh, establishing the foundations for health in agriculture. Okay, so, uh, we start here. Determining mining factors for salutogenesis according to the work of Michaela Glöckler. First level, 
is a high level. If we want to be able to resist, to react in any situation, she says we need to have a conscious relationship to the spiritual world and the worlds of thought, art, and culture. This gives consistency and meaning in life. And this is the basic level. If you don't have food, but you have that, you can survive. The second level is, and this we can consider it, uh, see the arrows. This is a level that connects us to something that's higher than us. Then we have a level that is a horizontal level, and it's uh, more on the social aspect. Mobilize the resources of resilience by cultivating relationship with others, family members, friends, social contacts, colleagues, and this also gives us uh, a strong base. The next level is what connects us to the earth, and your access to a minimum of material resources, education, healthy food, decent housing, healthcare, and this allows us to develop the capacity to adapt. Okay, this is um, what Michaela Gluckler considers to be the base to build health for humans. If we now look in agriculture, the sources of health for the farm. Relationship to the cosmos, and I just take things from the agriculture course. Relationship to the cosmos, by working with cosmic rhythms and with the preparations as substances organized by the cosmos. Think how this, the course starts. The first lecture starts by bringing us in a very, very wide context uh, and connect with the cosmos. When I've said the 501 can be used when you have uh, a lack of sun, what is it? When you bring warmth with the use of valerian, what is it? We don't create warmth, we don't make a fire, it's something different. There's something, there's a connection here with what's up there. Uh, on the horizontal level, what's building health in agriculture? Well, all the diversity, there's different levels. The relationship to a diversified environment, the individualized farm organism. This is all uh, stones to be, build a good, a good health. The landscape below the soil. We need diversity below the soil. And this is all the root system, mycorrhizae, big bacteria, worms, lava, all that. The landscape, well, just a little image for that because we're in 1924, I'll remind you. And Steiner draw, draw, uh, makes this drawing on the, uh, on the blackboard. This is the soil, plants, everything that's happening between the roots of the plants. Just think that the, the, all the richness of the mycorrhizae uh, systems was discovered not even 20 years ago. But it's here. And now we know that a plant is able to mobilize a nutrient that is 100 meters away by the, the landscape of roots and mycorrhizae. So, interesting. Uh, okay. Back to back here. How am I with time? How long will I be okay? <laughs> huh? Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. Um, the landscape of, above the soil, companion plants, wetlands, tree. Wetlands, well, it's not, wetland is not the right word, I think, but the idea is if we have some water somewhere, if we have a place for the mushrooms to be happy, maybe we'll get rid of them in other places or lower the pressure. Uh, the trees, the birds, all that. This is uh, just read the seventh lecture, uh, and many, many things are said in there. The animal, uh, as an analyzer, uh, and healer in its environment. The idea that the animal is able to balance its environment uh, through the manure. The animal then participates in a form of intelligent co-evolution of plants and soil. Okay, this is all connections on this horizontal uh, level that bring health in agriculture. And then the, the, the last part, the one that connects to the earth, Access to a minimum of fertility in the soil and manuring, okay. Compost with the six preparations, the 500 uh, that makes the roots go deeper 
that turns the, the organic matter to humus that will stu structure in the soil. The seeds and plants should be adapted to a local environment. This is a big uh, and important worry uh, in the course. The means to regulate pests and disease. And here we find in the preparation hostel. I didn't mention hostel. Uh, hostel? No. Yeah, it is a term, yeah. Um, I didn't mention it, but it's part of the nine preparations. Uh, and I think. Well, we see the preparation working very efficiently. It's always where all the nine preparations have been used. And Equisitum is part of them. And the 501 is a great health builder. If you spray the 501 where you, when, when your plants are growing fast, uh, you will see the results. Uh, we always have less problems with fungi, with parasites, in all the rest of the season. But it needs to be spread early. And you don't take any risk when you spray the 501 on plants that are growing a lot. It's just in brackets, but uh, you risk to burn plants uh, with 501 only when they are too weak or when they, uh, they, are, uh, they need to drink. If you have enough water in the soil, there's no problem. And you see that. When you see that your crops are growing, you can spray. The preparations as a link with the earth, and we come back to the 500, I've said that, the root systems, the soil structure, the humus. We can find that uh, there's three levels to build health in agriculture. We can find them in the, in the course. Um, I should probably show you that. I, can, I didn't need to make any drawings. I found them in Steiner's drawing. Uh, the relationships on the vertical plane connect to the cosmos. And you have here, relationship of plants and animals with the near and distant planets. This one, when he speaks about uh, vines and says, it's because we've lost all understanding of our relationship with the cosmos that we have, we've had these problems with vines, uh, Philoxera. This is also an illustration of this uh, aspect. Uh, Problem. Okay. The seed germinating under the influence of the whole cosmos. Rudolf Steiner. How do distant planets work on perennial plants and the color of fruits? Okay, this is all illustrations of this relationship to the cosmos. There's also some things about uh, the cambium and the relation of relationship of the cambium with the distant stars. I've shown you that one to illustrate the horizontal plane. And if we look at the other vertical plane, the one that connects to the Earth, we have these drawings where it speaks about the perforations and about practical uh, uh, things about manure. So, this, yeah, is it okay? The relationship between uh, building health in uh, human beings and in agriculture. Okay, I'll come to my conclusion. What we've seen, uh, what I, well, what we've seen uh, through these pictures, soil development, healthy plants how the use of the preparations can bring health in agriculture. Uh, it's a complete different view than the one from the plateau kinesis. We are health builders of biodynamic farms. And that's important. Um, from a more general point of view, the development of soil fertility and the storing of carbon in the soil, as well as food quality, are major issues to be confronted at the present time and in the future. What you've seen shows that we can have good results uh, from that point of view. What is the true nature of biodynamic agriculture? In particular, the preparations that are at the heart of 
the farming method. They do not only play a positive role in soil improvement, plant behavior, and the quality of the resulting production. They also act as principles of salutogenesis by creating health rather than treating disease. They play a regenerating, reorganizational role by creating a new, a bond bound of the living with the stellar and planetary crea creative spheres. Their role is fundamental with regard to the future and evolution of the Earth. The preparations can be seen as cosmetics for the face of the Earth, regenerating ungans for this planet in its aging process. The biodynamic preparations confer forces to the Earth to continue its evolution towards the future. The farmers that make and use the preparations metamorphize the soils, the plants, and the food, and contribute to the creation of a new Earth. The making and use of the preparations are the result of the path of consciousness to consciousness and freedom of the wine grower, the gardener, and the farmer. 